Let's move on to the next uh, slide, Alvarino. Yes, give me a second. Okay, here we go. Okay, so these weekly live sessions are focused on the in-depth discussion on the module. All live sessions are recorded, as we stated, uh, with a scrolling a chat and, and post automatically in the big blue button uh, chat session. Uh, obviously, you're here. You managed to, to get your ID and password and navigate to the big blue button. That's a great, uh, great achievement. Um, as we stated, it, it takes a while for us to convert the uh, video. It's available on the in, in this section. You can see it from there, but to see it from, uh, we have to convert it and then post it on YouTube. So that takes a little while. Uh, and again, uh, we reserve roughly 15 minutes. Uh, in some cases, some presenters want to uh, open up the questions throughout the session. Uh, sometimes we're experimenting with more than one speaker uh, for the session, so that could last more than one hour, could be an hour and a half. It all depends on, on the depth of the subject matter. Uh, and as I stated, please uh, post your, your uh, comments in the online survey. So uh, I think everybody has that. Uh, Alfredo, can we all see the, I think I posted it earlier on. Let me just post it again to the, to the bottom of the list. Okay, we can go on to the next slide. Okay, over to you, Alfredo. Okay, so uh, basically uh, here you can see uh, Glenn on the left and I'm on the right. Uh, on, on Glenn's picture, he, he has more hair than, than what he has right now. So don't be, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so our agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about why we created this virtual school of internet governance. And of course, the parties involved in the process and what are the, the features and benefits of this initiative. Uh, we are also going to talk uh, about some of the outcomes we are expecting and we're going to do some housekeeping and we're going to actually uh, give you a walk uh, through the, the sites for those especially that haven't started yet on how to navigate uh, the course. So having said that, Glenn, go ahead. Okay, so the idea is back in um, the, uh, the spring of last year, we started this process of creating uh, the free, and I have to stress, free online training course. That's part of our central um, philosophy. And it was a result because we we started and formulated to the North American School of Internet Governance, and we decided that it's not going to happen. And we were planning it in the fall uh, in Washington, and we have also it planned in Seattle the year after, and then back to San Juan again. So it was a long-term plan of doing face-to-face -face training. And it takes about a year to fundraise enough money for air flights and hotels and, and all that stuff. So we started looking at it and we said, why don't we create a virtual online training program? And that's what we did. And, and it had to be, uh, you know, neutral in terms of internet speeds and platforms. So when we looked at the model, and you're going to see it in a minute, uh, what how we chose the platform that we did. But key, besides the free online training platform we wanted to make sure that it had a interactive interactive experience uh i.e this this session today as well as most important is the live discussions and uh discussions by all of you as participants and ourselves and and seeding um things sharing resources uh, uh that that was a very central part of what our philosophy was we also uh, encourage continual, constant improvement of the course. If material is missing, we suggest, please get, uh, provide any suggestion. And that's also including any speakers that you can suggest uh, for the course as well. And I have to stress this, this is not to replace the face-to-face -face school. We, we've run face-to-face -face schools. We've participated with face-to-face -face schools, whether the Southern School with Olga, or with uh, Amrita and Satish and others in India. So we know the value of a face-to-face -face school, and this is not intended to replace that, but it, in many ways it gives to people who actually participate, like so many of our good friends from the Ghana School, many of those folks uh, joined us and were part of our, our course prior to doing their face-to-face -face school. And it's also uh, a really good source of level entry or 
entry level education for the IG professional. So if you're new to this, or you're an old hat and you just want to be brushed up, or you're with one of the organizations, whether ICANN, Diplo, ICANN, uh, ISOC, whatever, uh, we are providing a different approach to the same, same thing that all those organizations are doing. It's a, di a slightly different way to approach it. Uh, it, it not to, to knock down or criticize those, they're just different approaches. So uh, we, we hope we are a complement to what they're doing as well. Next slide. Yeah, sure. Before we do that, Glenn, uh, I, I would like to emphasize that uh, this is a, a, a really uh, an entry level education for, for all of the uh, IG uh, individuals interested uh, to learn more about internet governance. And, and if you have already participated in the introduction uh, discussion thread, you'll see that there's a variety of professionals that have a great background in internet governance, and we're going to lean on some of them uh, to help us out during the, the live sessions and the discussions as well. Back to you, Glenn. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, you've already met Alfredo uh, virtually and myself. Uh, we also have an advisory council, which is uh, Bill Joris, Eduardo Diaz, uh, Dr. Pablo Rodri uh, Rodriguez, uh, Rita Choldry, uh, Dr. Olivier Crepin LeBlanc. Uh, so what we do is we meet them uh, with them on a regular basis to get feedback on the course. Now, uh, if I go back to the spring when we started creating this, we actually had 18 beta testers evaluate our course. And I have to uh, do a shout out to Eduardo and Bill Joris. They were excellent and, and really tearing apart the, the content and, and making sure that it flowed in terms of especially in the sections of of infrastructure and history. And so their critical comments were very well valued. And so we also have, um, besides the guest speakers, which we have uh, 36 for these four cohorts, and we're also building a, a larger list. And most important is yourselves. Um, the participants are a critical piece in this. So um, what we have with VSIG is, uh, this is called a MOOC. It's, it's uh, a massive open uh, uh, online uh, courseware MOOC, and the tool that we're using is Australian, and it's um, it, they have different licenses depending on how many uh, those are involved. But it's a cloud-based online training platform, and it's multilingual, and um, it's very media-rich uh, in in terms of its capability. Uh, and the other thing, as I said earlier on, it's neutral in terms of the platform. So we uh, have tested it on, on uh, regardless of what the platform is, but it's also mobile friendly. So some of our, you, you may be accessing this course on mobile, maybe on um, a Chromebook, maybe on uh, Mac. It's so it's, it's not only mobile friendly, it's agnostic in terms of the platform. So the, the value of, and, and again, this is what we can recommend to any of you who are thinking of creating a course for your own uh, program that you're doing, uh, it's a complete management system. So we can drill down and on intelligence, which we do not share, on students, teachers, and, and for the sake of administration. Uh, we have the capability for offline learning as well. So if you go in, many of the, most of the material that we discover, which is, um, uh, whether research papers or in case of slideshows, we try to convert those all to eBooks using a tool called Flip HTML. And I posted in the uh, earlier on uh, one of the uh, sites of our books bookshelves. So you can download any of those eBooks and, and watch them at, at your own leisure. Um, we also have, as we stated, the live chats, the discussion forums, as you've seen um, in your introduction, fantastic. Uh, uh, backgrounds on people who've um, uh, elected to share their information background. And again, we try to encourage people who are, to meet each other to share information about what they are doing. And, and with good luck, perhaps you'll find some other people uh, that you'd like to share um, a paper on, or maybe, especially if any of you are looking at uh, being on uh, IGF or some other forum. And I can tell you from experience, uh, it's very important to have a, a range of people on your um, 
presentations or your your uh, panels with the IGF. So perhaps you'll meet some people here that you would have not met otherwise. Uh, in our last panel that, that we did on distance education, we had, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Alfredo, I think we had three people from Brazil on our panel. Yes, that's right. And myself and yourself, and it was a ex excellent, except the fact that uh, the time zones from where we are to Poland was a little tough. The one we did on the DC Coalition for Schools of Internet Governance was three in the morning, so that was a bit on a tough side. Mm -hmm. Okay, quizzes. Uh, the quizzes are, and you'll see in a second, they're, um, if you want a certificate, it's mandatory to get 80% on the quizzes, but you can do them. It's a memory aid. You, you know, if, if you've done these type of online courses on, if you, on Coursera or, or whether with the GSMA or, or other groups, you, you do them and, you know, it's a memory aid so you can go back. Uh, you, you have as many chances as you want in order to guess what the right answer is and so by default you you learn the material so there's a lot of latitude in the, the design of the quizzes and lastly as i said uh, we automatically issue a certificate of completion next slide please so this is what the certificate looks like uh not with the blank name but hopefully your name next slide okay so over to you alfredo sure uh I just want to emphasize that the certificate will have your name and uh, those of you that have a really long, long name, uh, you might want to revise that and I'll show you where you can do that because it might not fit in the uh, field where your name goes. Uh, and also you'll, you'll see that it'll have your, the date on which you completed the course and it'll have on the lower right corner any uh, identifier in case in the future uh, somebody wants to make reference to verify that you actually completed the course we'll be able to do that as well so having said that uh, in this slide you see three uh, screenshots of how the uh, the course looks on a mobile device remember that I mentioned or Glenn mentioned that you'll be able to do it on your tablet on your uh, smartphone as well so all you have to do is download the the Moodle app which is free and uh, I'll show you where you can download it or you can just uh, Google it, uh, the Moodle app, and you can download it and access uh, all the content on your device. And you can also uh, work with it offline and then synchronize back uh, when you have uh, internet access to update the information. So on the left, you can see part of the intro. In the middle, you can see part of the uh, history of internet governance and some of the uh, structure we have and on the right you can see the the way we have organized the the material which most of you have already uh have a looked at and we'll see that when we do the live walkthrough in a few minutes uh this is how you see it on a tablet as you can see the real estate is is bigger uh so you'll be able to see basically all the information and on the left you have sort of a dashboard and you can click on each one of them and see uh, the features that each one has. And you can actually chat or exchange messages, look at the calendar of events and so forth. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see on the left side, there's a screenshot of how the content is organized within each one of the uh, books. We call book uh, the, the content it's, itself and it's arranged sort of in chapters and each chapter may have some sections as you can see on the left and on the right you can also see how it looks when uh, you look at it through the through a tablet which has as i mentioned a larger screen so you'll be able to focus on the content and some of the uh, actual material at the same time on the next slide uh, here you can also uh, have an idea of how the the content of a question looks like uh, as Glenn mentioned you have to achieve 80 percent on each one of the quizzes in order to get the certificate of, of completion at the end on the right side you can see exactly how the question looks on your uh, tablet if you're using a tablet it's sort of the same uh, uh, display here is a closer view of a question and you can actually uh, see 
each one of the alternatives. And in this case, it's a sort of a, a matching question that you'll see in one of the sections. So let's, uh, Glenn, talk about the benefits. Thanks. Uh, I just had to unmute. Uh, when I'm typing, I think you can hear me typing. So I'm trying to welcome everybody. And 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 thanks to everybody that that have has come. And uh, I noticed that Bill Joris is online as well. As I mentioned, Bill is based in California. Yeah, he had an early start today, and um, he's um, one of the sessions that you can look back and some of the recordings. Hey, he's been a volunteer with the IDNs and. Um, uh, with the um, with ICANN. So if you're interested in that issue on a universal acceptance uh, issues of the internet and non-English internet, he's the one to, to chat to as well. Okay, let's move on. So um, we are trying to provide you with an educational roadmap for internet governance. And, and you know, it, it's a, it's a, let me, let me put it this way. Um, it, you can have a map to get to somewhere from your home to say, so your vacation spot, but there's many ways to get there. And, and many of you may have a particular interest in say the legal aspects or the economic aspects or the human rights aspects, internet governance, and some of that other side roads or those other stops along the way are really not a big interest for you. And we appreciate that. We understand that. And, and, um, we uh, we can only say that that you know take a, some time look at the material. We don't expect you to read it all. We don't expect you to to watch every video. It is basically a platform that we are trying to share the uh, information so that you can take it as you need it. So uh, if as like, like a car trip, you you know some you need food and you need gas and you need uh, you know the. Uh, material to make your journey uh, successful. It's the same thing as this. So we we clearly want to assist you in providing as much as possible, and and so that you find what area that you're really interested in, and and top up your information. In many cases, uh, we've had people who are lawyers and saying it's not enough, or their material that's legal aspects is elsewhere within the course. And, and you're going to have that. We're going to have a differences of opinion in terms of how much should we add to this. And it's limitless in our, in our opinion. But um, what we wanted to do is provide you with the benefits to work at it at your own pace. Uh, and it's, it's not, you know, we don't force anyone to come to these calls on Monday. You can listen to them at your leisure. You can spend the time that you would like uh and the discussion threads but what you put into it is what you get out yeah, that's that's uh fundamentally our philosophy uh and having said that uh keep in mind that every basically everything is either downloadable as we've if glenn mentioned the ebooks you can download them and and read them at your leisure there are some videos where we have the link so you can also have them in your own uh list of uh, videos to watch and uh, there's a lot of links that we point you to the actual resource uh, it could be an organization it could be a working group there's a lot of information there so it's really as Glenn mentions up to you what you want to look at what you want to read in the next 11 weeks what you want to have as a uh, personal resource that you can use uh, later on so let's go on to the next slide so uh, on this slide, we're going to, I'm going to talk to you a little bit of some housekeeping, but we're actually going to see, see it in, in, in a live uh, walkthrough. Uh, some of you uh, have not updated your profile. Now, this is what we need you to do. When you get, get into your account on the top right side, you'll see there's a sort of a tick next to a place where you can place your, your image. Click on that. Uh, a menu will appear uh, so you're going to look for the profile and click on that and that will take you to the next screen you see on the on the right on the right you see that for your student uh, in this case student demo but for you there is a section where you can edit your profile and and that will allow us to to get some more information that you might want to share so on the on this next screen you'll see that once you click on the edit profile 
you're going to go to the general section and on the general section there's something that's very important that each one of you have to do you have to click in your city or your town and you also have to select your country like for example in my case it's san juan and my country is puerto rico if you're from india uh please select your city select your country and update your time zone this updating of your time zone will allow you to see in your actual time when the events are going to take place so that's very important that each one of you do because for example if i say that next week we're going to have a session at 9 a.m eastern time uh, you'll be able to see it reflected in your actual time zone uh, so you'll be able to participate without any confusion so please uh, do that as soon as we finish this session or and share the word uh, with all the other uh, classmates you can also add your picture so if you want to add your picture all you have to do is under the edit profile go down to the users uh, picture and you can look for it in your computer and you'll be able to upload it uh, with uh, the corresponding uh, image that you would like to use. Those have, have seen mine have seen that I have my, my picture. So on this screen, you can actually uh, see something important. Some of you have, asked, have been asking, well, where, where do I look for the participant guidebook and place the check mark? Here you have it. You see the participant guidebook. You click on it if you want to open it. And on the right side, there's a, a box where you have to click on it in order to place the uh, check mark. Once you do that, you'll be able to continue as usual, looking through the content and answering uh, the quizzes. And if you get the 80%, at the end, you'll get the certificate. And I'll show you where that certificate will appear. Although you're also going to get an, an email if we have your correct email address. Uh, you'll get a copy of the certificate. So moving on, uh, this is an example of the discussion uh, threads that most of you have already started participating. This is a screenshot from one that we did. We started last uh, on the first cohort, actually. Uh, but most of you already are familiar with this. All you have to do is go into join the conversation if you want to add a different topic, just click on add a different uh, topic and, and start the discussion. If you want to join one discussion in particular, just click on the discussion title and you'll be able to add your comments to that uh, conversation as well. Uh, if, if you look at the uh, live uh, sessions, you'll see always this symbol this big b which means big blue button uh if you click on it it'll take you where you are right now after you do the setup for the audio or the video in 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 each one of the uh, live sessions on the next screen uh again and i'm going to keep on emphasizing this it's important that you click on the right side on the box where you put the check mark um, for the participant guidebook. If you do all the quizzes, if you get 80%, you're not going to see the certificate unless you check mark this box as well. So keep that in mind and I'll try to remember, uh, remind you as we move forward and towards the end of this uh, cohort of participants. Glenn? Yeah, um, I need to emphasize that uh, as this famous quote, it's attributed to Abraham Lincoln, but actually it's written by another chap, but it's usually attributed to Abraham Lincoln. You can please some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time, but you cannot please all of the people all of the time. So we're going to have some things that some people think is great. Some people say it stinks. But, you know, we are trying our best to be able to produce a product that that really is uh, going to 
we hope, please most of the people. But uh, again, we, we, we realize that this is an evolution. It's, uh, we don't have all the answers made. It will take some time to get uh, it right. Uh, but I think we're playing a, a critical role given COVID-19. So uh, we appreciate your, your patience with us. And um, if, you have, if you like the course, the biggest uh, contribution to us is providing a testimonial, a blog post, and tell your friends. And uh, the idea is we want to build community. Thank you. So this is uh, where you find out more information. We try to post on a regular basis on our website, the virtualsig.org. Uh, so uh, for example, uh, Group E uh, registration is already open. That's in September. And there are some slight variances on the, the uh, new course that will be coming up in the fall. Uh, we have the online platform, you, as you all know, what the link is. Uh, the FAQs, uh, we try to update that on a regular basis on the website. We have a Facebook site, uh, Facebook slash virtual sig and uh, you can get hold of me at info at virtual sig.org and alfredo at registration at virtual sig.org uh, some of you have already contacted me and, and glenn because you have some issues uh, accessing the course and we try to resolve them in a timely manner so so please please reach out to us if you have any any questions regarding the uh, platform and your log in and, and please share this with, again with your classmates as well uh, before you go to the live um update I, I see susan has asked a question she asked alfredo maybe you can answer this on the moodle app what details does one fill in i tried in an int gov 003 but not successful so can you address that issue sure susan and and thank you for the question and and, and to benefit everybody all you have to do is first of all you have to, uh, in the site, there's a site section where you have to write the, the URL of the platform, which is internetgovernance.moodle.school. That's the site uh, that you have to log in. Then it asks you for, if I recall correctly, your username, uh, and then you give it your username or your password, one of those. But the first thing, it's not the name of the course, it is the platform, internetgovernance.moodle.school, and then it'll ask you for some more information, which I believe is your user and password. That should work. If it doesn't work, Susan, or anybody else has any issues with that, send me a, a message and I'll resolve it uh, with you offline, okay? Okay, so, so we're going to do a live through, a walkthrough. Yes. Uh, hope everybody can see this screen. Uh, everybody sees this? Lynn? Yes, we can. Uh, okay, thank you. So, so this is uh, what I actually see as a administrator and Glenn as well, but in your case, you're only going to see the one that says internet governance uh, with the banner. And this is the actual site for your course. Uh, for those that have been asking about the, uh, the Moodle app, if you notice on top, on the right side, next to the VSEQ uh, acronym, you'll see that it says Moodle app and there you can actually download the Moodle app if you want to for your uh, device or there's a client that you can download for your desktop as well. So on the right, on the left side, you see that there's a dashboard and we'll look at that in a moment. But on the right side, you recall that I mentioned that there's a tick that you click on in order to access your profile. So you click on it and you'll actually see here you see the your uh, uh, profile and you'll be able to add something regarding your background if you want to a short bio as well and if you keep moving downwards you'll see the area where you do the edit profile that I mentioned keep in mind that if you click on it you will be only able to if you want to change your name because it's too long your first name or your last name please do it because as I told you, 
on the certificate, it might truncate your name uh, when it prints out your certificate. Your email, uh, please make sure that it's uh, the correct one. Um, this is important for everybody. And the important part is, as I mentioned, if you go to the city, town, country, uh, city, town, please write in your city or your town, select your country, and there's a drop down list where you can look up basically most of the countries according to the UN list. And the time zone is important. So you just click on it and you select your uh, time zone. And that will automatically reflect everything in your actual uh, time zone. And, and you'll be up to date on that. Uh, then if you keep moving downwards, you'll be able to update uh, your photo. Just look for it. If it's on your desktop or on your computer, you can click and drag it. And uh, you can also identify with a picture description. Uh, why is it important that you fill out the picture description? Uh, because we, we may have people that have some difficulty uh, understanding or reading the text. And if they have a, if they're visually impaired and they have a text reader, they'll be able to, to read the text behind the, the images. Uh, and remember to update that profile in order to have it up to date in that section. Now, going back to the dashboard on the top left, you'll see there's a button there that has three lines on it. If you click on it, it will collapse the dashboard. If you click on it again, it will expand the dashboard. In my case, my dashboard has additional content, which yours won't have. But if I click on dashboard, it will take me back to all the courses that I'm taking. And I'm, I'm showing this to you particularly because you'll see on the right side that I have all the, I have a block that shows all the people that are online at a particular time during the course. So if you're online and you want to chat with somebody else, you just click on his name and you'll be able to chat individually with that person. So if, for example, I pick on Kathy Bogart, I click on her name, uh, I'll be able to chat with her individually and won't bother anybody else in the course. So let me uh, go back. Alfredo, um, yeah. can you, yeah, can you hold there for a second? And I, it associates with the question that Jim is asking. You see uh, Frederick's name, how long it is? Uh, she's yeah. asking how many characters, what's the character limit? Like obviously Frederick's full name is not going to be allowed in the certificate. It's going to be cut off. So what is the um, char the limit? in terms of the characters? Well, you know, I haven't tried that, so I really don't know. Uh, I'm just saying that because that might happen and uh, we'll, we won't know until somebody completes the course and it comes out. It might fit, but it might not. I really don't know. So, so I'm sorry if that answer, that doesn't answer your question, but I really don't know. Uh, can I move on, Glenn? Yeah, yeah please go. Okay, sure. So uh, if we click on, uh, we're on the course on Internet Governance 003, which is the, uh, the cohort we're dealing with. Uh, if we start moving down, you'll see that we have some introductory information for all of you. Uh, we have the uh, our address to contact Lynn. And uh, as part of our initiative uh, we mentioned at the beginning that we want to keep this free but in order to do that uh, we need to raise some funds and we have a GoFundMe for visit donations enabled here so those that feel that the course has been uh, fruitful that you learned something that's worth a while and you want to help us maintain this you can uh, help us out with that uh, Something else that we're doing, we're raising uh, funds through uh, sponsorships, through different organizations. So if you believe that this is worthwhile and you know key people that we can talk to about this and see if they want to get involved, reach out to info at virtualseek.org for that. And Glenn will be able to give you and them more information regarding that. 
if we keep moving down, you'll see that there's an announcement section. And, and as Glenn mentioned, in this announcement section, we try to post uh, topics that are important to uh, all of the participants. And you can see that, that Glenn and I have tried, and, uh, and Mihaela as well, has shared with us some important information regarding different events or resources that we feel should be uh, shared with all of you. And we try to do that in the announcement section uh, so you can all uh, see that. If we keep moving down, we have the participant guidebook and that will open up as a PDF in another window and you'll be able to download it and, and go through it. Uh, something that's important within the, the guidebook is the, uh, the code of conduct. Uh, so read it and make sure that you agree with it. Uh, just as a highlight, we don't share information that you give us. We only use it for our internal purposes. Uh, so you can be uh, assured that nothing is going to be uh, shared with third party. Uh, the other thing is that we try to describe in the guidebook the meaning of all the icons you'll find throughout the course. So read it, and if you have any questions, uh, let us know. And if you notice on the right side, there's the, the check mark that you have to uh, have in place in order to uh, get your certificate if you're seeking the certificate uh, and you complete all the quizzes with 80% or more. Uh, so uh, we've been getting to know each one of you uh, through the discussion thread, and if you click on it, uh, you'll see that, let me see if I can get there, oh, okay, here we go, that everybody uh, is uh, engaged presenting themselves and sharing some information with other colleagues. And uh, it's impressive to see such a vast variety of professional backgrounds included in this uh, discussion thread. Uh, so welcome to all of you, and uh, the list keeps on you know, getting longer, we have 120 uh, uh, individuals participating in this cohort. So welcome again and, and keep on, inter you know, sharing your information. Uh, if you see uh, below the Internet Governance slash Group C uh, name, you'll see that there's a, a breadcrumb. So if you're getting to know the participants and you want to go back to the introduction, you can just click here or you can go to the dashboard on the left side and click on there. So I'm gonna do it clicking on the breadcrumb and here we go. We're back to the introduction section. Uh, everybody who's here knows uh, all about the big blue button uh, section, how to log in. But since we're recording this, for those that aren't uh, familiar with this uh, yet, all you have to do is read the information that describes the, sec the session we're going to have, the time, and there's a tool here that you can use as a time and date corroboration with your time zone. But remember, if you do what I told you to do in your profile, you won't have any problems uh, because you'll see the correct uh, uh, day and time for your session. So if I click on important introduction session, it'll actually take you to the features that you need to be aware of. You, Once the session is supposed to be open for you to start logging in, you'll see that there's a join the session button. I'm not going to end the session right now. Uh, it tells you how many viewers are in the session and how many moderators. Glenn and I are the moderators. So unless we are in the session, you won't see the join the session button. So make sure that uh, you uh, see that uh, checking the time zone, and you will also uh, be aware if the moderator is already on, on board by the join session button. You see that there is a section here that says recordings. So this recording will, will appear here in a list uh, about an hour, an hour and a half, if of the, the service is working correctly uh, after we finish the session. It might take a little bit longer because Big Blue Button is taken care of by a third party. Uh, 
Let me jump in uh, on that uh, big blue button. And we're using that because it's bundled together with the MOOC or the Moodle. Uh, probably some people are asking, why aren't we using Zoom? This is the, you know, in, in some cases, when like when we do our graduation ceremony, we'll be using Zoom uh, for that. But uh, in this case, we stay within the um, within the platform. It adds a little extra work. But I think all of you who joined today didn't have a problem getting into it. Back to you, Alfredo. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so having said that, this is this is uh, what we call the introduction uh, section or module. If we go into the history of internet governance as an example, here you'll see a short uh, description of what you can expect. And something that we try to do since we're going to talk about so many uh, topics within the internet governance, and we're going to use so many acronyms, we thought that we should gather uh, together th those sources where you can find the definitions or the explanation of those acronyms. So that's why you'll see that we have the ICANN acronyms and terms link here and this will take you, actually it'll take you to uh, the website where ICANN has its acronyms and one of the features we we've liked a lot is that you'll be able to read them in different languages besides English we have Spanish uh, French and uh, Chinese or Mandarin. Uh, so we have six international uh, languages uh, that you can go through uh, and look at those acronyms or definitions. And uh, we thought this was a better way to keep it updated if uh, somebody else does it for us. And I think Glenn won't disagree on that. Uh, we also have the Internet Governance Acronyms through Glossary. You can also click on that one. That's compiled by Diplo Foundation. Uh, and although it's dated from 2019, they try to keep it also updated. And if we notice that they have a, a newer version or uh, they do some updates, we'll link you to that as well. And we also have from the SMA, we have their uh, dictionary because that, that's an organization that deals a lot with uh, telecommunications and they offer a lot of courses that Glenn and I have taken and we thought that that would increase the value especially when we talk about technical terms. Uh, moving on to the structure, uh, you'll see that we have objectives and th this actually clicks on, if you click on it, it'll give you a short description of what we are expecting from you in each one of the modules. We have some specific objectives that are easy to meet. Uh, you'll just have to read through the content uh, uh, to meet those. And, and be able to answer the questions in most of the quizzes. As a matter of fact, I think there's uh, one of your classmates that already did all the quizzes. Uh, and that's interesting because uh, that gives me the impression that he is knowledgeable about internet governance. And he actually uh, went through the, the quizzes without having to read most of the material because he knows most of it already. Uh, so here you can also find, as part of the objectives, you'll find the uh, ebooks that Glenn mentioned as well uh, using Flip HTML5. And on the lower side of each one of these ebooks, you, you see the, uh, the tools you'll need uh, to share that information. You can download it. You can uh, read them if you want to in full screen, and you can go back and so forth. So it's, it's, it's a nice tool, and Glenn has a lot of bookshelves regarding most of the topics. Uh, so here we have an issue. It says that Firefox can open this page. If this actually happens, it's because uh, Firefox is increasing its uh, security using uh, the uh, DOH or some of those other uh, uh, technologies. Uh, so you'll have to try it out with uh, 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 Google uh, uh, website uh, browser instead of uh, Firefox and, and that that could happen uh, but for example it still says here open site in a new window that means that you can probably open it up as a separate window uh, and I'll look into that and see if we can fix it so that you'll be able to open it up within Firefox uh, 
Then after the objectives, if, if we go back to the history of the of Internet governance, you'll see that here you have the actual content under the book uh, icon. If you click on it, uh, you'll see the table of content on the right. I'm going to get rid for a, sec for a second of the dashboard or the navigation on the left so you'll have more screen real estate here to see the content. We're actually in the introduction section right now. We state how long the videos are if you want to watch them. We have here uh, an interesting uh, presentation. It's uh, one and a half hour, approximately one and a half hour long. Sorry, sorry, Alfredo. Um, I'm maybe your screen is freezing, but I'm still seeing the um, the flip book on the introduction to the slides we had. Uh, I'm not sure if you're showing something else. I, I am not seeing uh, what you're talking about. Okay, so let me stop sharing and share again and see if that resolves that issue. While you're doing that, I, I posted folks in the um, in the chat an example of a bookshelf that um, Alfredo talked about. It's the, the Global Spectrum Management Association. They have a lot of free courses, but you have to apply to get into the course. So what I've done is I've collected their PDFs and converted them into eBooks. And so you'll see an example of the um, one, one set of books on Spectrum. So back to you. Uh, are we seeing the, the screen now? Yes, I am. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. So I was mentioning that uh, this is the actual table of content of the history of internet governance, and you can uh, navigate through each one of the chapters, and some chapters, as you can see, has uh, different sections. Uh, the videos, uh, there's a, a short description how long they are. You can see some of the flip books that uh, the ebooks that Glenn is mentioning. Now, I also want to highlight that at the end of each one of the uh, areas, we have some tags, and this might be uh, important to you. Uh, there are some concepts that we cover in more than one module. Like, for example, I'm just going to take history for ex as an example. So if I click on history, it'll show me where history is being uh, used but that's not actually the most important thing. The most important thing is that on top here, on this uh, breadcrumb, you'll see that there's a tags highlighted. And if you click on that, it'll show you all the tags we are using, the, well, at least the first 150 tags that we're using. And those that are familiar with uh, word clouds will see that the bigger the term or the phrase, that means that we're using it in more than one uh, content area or module. So if you want to learn more about ICANN, for example, and you click on that, it'll display all the modules where we're actually talking about ICANN. So if that's of interest to you, you can go to the organizations which manage internet network protocols and standards, or you can go to the multi-stakeholder model, which are even though they might be within the same uh, module, they're in different sections. So this will give you a sense of, for example, if I click on multi-stakeholder model, that's part of the history of internet governance, but that is actually something that we discuss under chapter 10 as a section 10.2 within the history of internet governance. So we, we're trying to be as thorough as we can with the tags and with the content. Each module has a join the discussion where if you already participated in the introducing yourself, it's similar to that, and I'm not going to repeat myself. Uh, we have the quizzes. Uh, the quizzes, as we've mentioned, you, you can take them as many times as you wish. Uh, this one, for example, I've taken 10 times, and that's just to show you how this works. And it also gives you the date by when you have to complete all the quizzes if you want to meet the deadline for this cohort uh, of participants. Uh, complementary resources. Uh, this is an important section, uh, and, and, and we've done this because we know that we don't want to burden you reading a lot of material, but we complement what we have in the main sections of the course 
with some additional resources. And you'll see here that we have, for example, a presentation that Olivier Crepin Lebron did in, in the North American School of Internet Governance in Montreal uh, in, in 2019 uh, uh, for us. Uh, you'll see a video that covers the history of uh, ARPANET and with one of the uh, original participants in, in that project. And as we move down, you'll see that there's other resources that you can actually uh, visit and, and, and learn more about. And actually remember that next week we're going to have one of the fathers of the internet, Vince Surf, participating with us. So this is something that we've been aggregating, collecting for you as well. So if you find uh, some resources that you feel that we should add mm. as a complementary resource, we, we can do that. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, we have the, the chat space. As I mentioned, if you come into the course and you see there's some other, somebody else online and you want to start a chat with that person, you just click on chat and you'll be able to enter the chat now and, and start a conversation with with that person. Like for example, if I write hello and, and there's somebody that I want to address that to, I, I, I should be able to, to do that as part of the one-to-one uh, -one conversation without bothering anybody else within the course. Uh, going back to the history of internet governance and I'm almost through that, uh, you also see that we have the history of internet governance in this case, and we have set up the information regarding that. And that goes on and on for each one of the different sections that we have. Uh, Glenn, back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I have to emphasize the complementary resources is is a monster project. And 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 part of me is, is uh, Thinking how do we how do we organize it so it's an offline resource as well? Uh, we've gone through a lot of different uh, locations. When you get into the uh, security section, that is a massive amount of resources there as well. Uh, some areas, some sections uh, need more resources, uh, and some some not so much. So uh, feel free to take any resource you want, and we do have um, a form that we ask people for suggestions, whether it's a blog, a blogger, um, a PDF, a research paper, or a potential speaker. So feel free to um, to let us know. And again, we, we really try to emphasize that this is not an ICANN course. So we do have some ICANN people uh, occasionally as a speaker, but this is not an ICANN uh, course. Uh, we do have uh, ISOC speakers, but it's not an ISOC uh, of course. So we try to have as much uh, diversity as possible and gender balance as possible. And so you'll see it in, in our selection, but it's, it's, you know, we have, we are somewhat limited in terms of the time. Uh, there is some speakers from Australia. We really wanted to have uh, with uh, this section on legal, but uh, unfortunately the person it just would be two o'clock in the morning, so it was not doable. But um, in some cases, uh, uh, people accommodate us, like like I mentioned, Bill, a little earlier. So, okay, so we can go on to, uh, as I stated, the, the um, all the slides uh, uh, are available and converted into eBooks. And if you have any um, speaker feedback, uh, we've given you the, the form. So I think we can move on. Uh, we have uh, a few minutes left. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to walk through quickly on uh, what's coming up. Okay, so you heard myself and Alfredo. Uh, next slide. Uh, I, I'm almost embarrassed to, to, to uh, mention this, uh, this, this individual. If you haven't uh, uh, known about uh, Vince Cerf, you definitely, he's the chief evangelist at uh, at Google, he'll be talking about the uh, history, uh, and and again, we want to to sort of probe his his uh, knowledge and and perspective on the future of the internet as well. So feel uh, free to ask some questions. 
Uh, so let's, um, that'll be next Monday. Next, it'll be Nick Smith. And I think uh, um, Keith Dravick uh, will be joining him as well. Uh, they're both from Verisign. So uh, that'll be the section on actors. Uh, next slide. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Pablo Rodriguez from dot PR. That's the dot uh, PR is the Puerto Rican uh, country code and Allison Moore of Sierra, which is dot CA. Uh, both of them will be sharing the section on uh, discussing on infrastructure. Next slide. Okay. Uh, Jane Coffin, uh, VP at uh, ISOC. She'll be talking about community networking and bringing in the, um, the recent, uh, uh, strategy that ISOC has in terms of their action plan 2021 and they will be talking about some of the projects that they uh, did as well. Uh, after that Brian Jambolik who is the uh, guest speaker uh, at uh, sorry he's the lawyer legal counsel VP at uh, public interest registry he'll be talking about domain abuse uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Damon Ashcroft will from uh, will talk about intellectual property uh, issues with uh, the domain industry. He uh, uh, is based in Arizona. He was the chair for um, the NOMCOM and he was with the IPC community within ICANN. Uh, Dr. Luca Belli uh, is from Brazil. He'll be, uh, in fact, I think, um, uh, some of the postings have been done uh, in the announcements already on some of his his lectures. He's also uh, with the DC Coalition uh, with IGF. Uh, next slide. Human rights. Uh, uh, Mohamed Bashir is a longtime uh, community member from Sudan. He'll be talking about uh, universal acceptance and uh, a non-English uh, internet. So he'll be speaking on human rights. And lastly is uh, Chennai Chair. She's based in South Africa. She's done a fantastic paper. She's an actual um, Mozilla Fellow on a feminist internet and data. So she'll be our last session for our live sessions. So uh, I think it's almost time is up and, and I'm just looking. Uh, Kathy, I think she's probably corrected my spelling on her name. Uh, thank you, Kathy. I'll double check that, uh, making sure I don't make that error. Uh, not, a, not unusual for me to make an error once in a while, I'm only human, but thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I'm just looking for any other questions. Uh, did we, um, shall we post the, again, uh, Alfredo, the, the link to the feedback form? Maybe I shouldn't do that. Yeah, if you have it. Uh... Okay. There we go. I posted it again. So that's basically it. Um, you know, this is this is tough uh, to give you a great introduction on what to look forward to. Uh, we're very accessible. So, you know, if you have questions or dialogue with each other, um, again, we emphasize this is an opportunity for each of you to get to know each other. Okay, there's again, Olivia, still a question on the length of names. So uh, again, we'll, we'll double check on that. Uh, Today we'll we'll check on the uh, the character size on the um, certificate and get back to you on that. Okay, I don't see anything else, so uh, I guess we'll conclude this. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, this recording will be available for those who did not attend it, and we'll share it with you as quickly as possible. Again, thank you all for joining us today, and uh, have a great day, and we'll see you. Or Hear from you next Monday. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks to all of you. Bye.